What is up, you guys? We're back. First time Haley's back in a full-time full video. video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today we're going to go into our booth because we haven't been to our booth in, I don't know, like a month and a half. Longer maybe than two that, months. I <laughs> uh, and I think we've sold five things in the last two months. And obviously that's terrible. So we're going to go try to save it. We've got some new inventory. We're going to take out some old stale inventory. We'll see what we can do. So Haley and I started renting this booth last October and the first two months we were here were our top sales of the year. It was new, it was exciting, it was Q4 so maybe people were buying things for gifts for the holiday season but the last couple months have been really really slow. We've actually lost money. We haven't even made enough in sales to pay the rent for our booth space. So we're trying to put new items in here. I'm putting out some comic books. I'm putting out some Pyrex dishes. Kind of just a big mix of stuff just to see what people are buying because I think we need to just pay a little bit more attention to the booth, see what's selling, see what isn't, and try to adjust our inventory going forward. So as you guys just saw, we took out a good amount of stuff from our booth. The whole Hulkin bag full actually looks like it's going <laughs> to tip over. It's a little top heavy. Also taking out that high chair, just stuff that's been in here for too long. Yeah. But... It's a little bare now, but it, it feels refreshing. Yeah, we got plenty of room <laughs> to put new and better stuff. I think our problem was we, we made our booth half off uh, like two months ago, but we never put a sign in here that said that it was just ringing up for half off so i think if we put a sign in here that says you know everything in here currently half off i think we'd sell a lot more stuff uh we gotta check the gumball machine the keys are in the car so stay tuned for that we'll see how much how many quarters are in there i'm gonna take this to the car go print some new labels for all the new inventory we dropped off and then yes. just try to make things look a little bit better i guess i think we checked it when we came back from europe that one that's the only time we've been to the booth so it's been at least six weeks Look how full that is. There's a penny. There's a penny in there. I love that people are signing quarters. CMC Dynamite. Shout out to you. Hi. Shout out to all of you guys. That's pretty good. It is amazing. Count it up. So we got all this counted up. What was it? Forty. Forty-two dollars and seventy-six six cents. Forty-two seventy-six. <laughs> We're gonna take all this. I haven't cashed in any of the quarters that we pulled out of this machine. So like somewhere in our house or warehouse that we just have like hundreds of dollars in quarters. We're gonna have to spend Lunch them eventually. Lunch money. Lunch. <laughs> uh, we gotta take this home and then fill in the poster. See how close we are to break even. Uh, I think we're only, last time maybe we were like $75 away from yeah. break even. So this 42 should close. get us pretty close. Figured we'd stop by this Goodwill since it's very close to our booth. Maybe we can find something here that we can take back to the booth and yes. add to the inventory because the shelves are looking a little bare. <laughs> Okay, we got a couple of very interesting pairs of shoes here. Well, a nice little pair of Nike Air Max. Nothing too crazy, but six dollars and fifty cents. Probably grab those. I got this pair of Jordans right here. Something flight plate. Never heard of those, but we'll probably grab them. Over here, we got some Ufos sandals. That's three good pairs of shoes right there. Haley's got this really cool toolbox here. Yeah, Dunlap. Dunlap. It's six dollars, which I think is maybe a little bit much. But I thought it was so cool. It's got what a lot of What does the inside look like? It doesn't have any shelves or anything. It's just like hmm. that. I still think it's interesting. I think it is too. Maybe throw it in the booth for like 20 bucks or something? Yeah. See if that'll work. I got all those shoes earlier and then I just saw this pair of Vans up here on the shelf. What do you think about these? They're kind, they're kind of dirty, but I mean, they're in good shape, just dirty. Oh, this one's got a rip. That's oh, why they're up there. Whoops. Aww. Somebody got them and then Sad. saw that and just put them back on the <laughs> shelf. They just had an employee come out the back and start putting out new shoes on the shelf. And I grabbed these, like literally right after he put them out. Hyperflex Footjoy Golf Shoes, the American Flag Edition with the spikes on the bottom. $6.50. They are used. They got a couple little scuffs on the toes, but I think they'll clean up pretty pretty well. We got another pair of golf shoes right here. I thought these were just regular New Balance, but they actually have spikes on the bottom. These are a good size too. I think men's men's 13, four extra wide. And they look to be in good shape. So we'll definitely get those 650. That should be an easy 35, maybe $40 right there. Fortunately, we didn't really find anything else for the booth. I think, well, I guess the toolbox. The toolbox would be booth uh, and everything else will probably go to eBay and or whatnot. What about a little, oh, we got a little vintage coffee thing. It's kind of neat. Stuff like that I think would do well in the booth, but then I know it wouldn't. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I know. Look at this cute little bug trap. I guess it's a bug trap. You can put whatever you want in there. It looks handmade. Put a little frog or something in there. That actually might be cute for the booth. 
so it's been like three days i think since we reset the booth we've come back by to drop off a couple more things uh it's still looking about the same we have sold nine of the comics uh, nine that's yeah. more than I nine yeah i the problem is we're not making very much money i think i paid like 60 cents a piece for the comics we're selling them for for i think we priced them at three dollars a piece but then everything is half off in the booth uh, so we're getting like after fees like a dollar 35 so technically doubling our money and it's nice in the booth because we're selling them on whatnot for about the same price like mm. about two dollars a piece so it's less fee well about the same amount of fees but we don't have to ship uh and we don't have to use the comic boxes each of the comic boxes we ship in are like oh, yes. like, like 80 sure. cents a piece so i'm fine with selling stuff i i guess hindsight it might should have priced them at four dollars half price two dollars a piece that would have been a little bit better uh we also sold a set of uh three pyrex dishes that were over here uh, we got them at the bins and i don't know probably paid five dollars and those sold for 30. it was 60 dollars half price so not bad we're have more sales in the last three days than we have in the last month <laughs> I, I think so i it seems to be working i'm learning what people like and what people don't like we have not sold artwork uh, we have that painting that painting's been here for nine months this mm -hmm. painting's been here for a long time this I painting's thought, been here for a long time I thought people would really like this because this is charleston which yeah. is very close to where we are and this is very like picturesque charleston yeah um sad that hasn't gone yet what do we have in that we have it 60, 60 so it's only 30 bucks 30. i think that's a great this deal. one's only 20 and this is like an actual painting yeah. in an old country store uh i feel like just the f like nice wooden frame is worth that hopefully this thing sells the crazy eyes candy pool yeah. well, I also have this skull thing, so I think when we get closer to Halloween, which is literally like right around the corner, you yep. know people get crazy about Halloween in yep. like, what, August? Yep. <laughs> so I'm hoping that'll sell as well. We still haven't sold our Funko Pops. Obviously we have hundreds of Funko Pops left. I just put a couple of them here just to see if we could sell them. Because if we can sell them in the booth for $8, no shipping, that's better than selling them or whatnot. Because again, that's about what we're, what we're getting for them or whatnot. These boxes I haven't sold. This box is only 20 bucks, like a nice wooden crate. Maybe I'll turn it around this way so people can see that it's hollow. Somebody did say on the video one time we should put records in there so people can see Ooh. that it's like, yeah. could hold records. Yeah. This ammo crate hasn't sold and it's only, I forgot what we have. Is there a price? price? Yep, it is $50, so $25. I would check the gumball machine again. I can tell that. I can tell there's more quarters in there over the last couple of days, but I don't have the keys with me today. You never have the keys I, with you. <laughs> I think they might be in the car, but uh, we'll check that in the future. But overall, I think we need to like learn about what's selling. So paintings don't sell action figures. Like we put a couple of our action figures in here. None of those have sold. Yeah, I think the problem with that though is there's a bunch of vendors in here that actually do action figures. Mm -hmm. So it's like competing with the same kind of inventory. Yeah. Now, that office chair has been in here. Maybe it's not obvious that it's, it's for sale. Obvious, That's no. one of the first things we put in here. Product placement. We're learning a lot about product placement yeah. and what, what, where people are finding things based on kind of where they are. So I think over the next week or so, we'll probably just focus on getting more stuff in here, stuff that people are actually buying. Uh, we sold a lot of purses in here. Clothing actually sold pretty well. We sold out of clothing over the last couple months. We had to restock. And obviously, the more time and effort you put into something, the more profitable it's, profitable it's going to be. So I, I, the last two months, we've actually lost money. Like, we haven't made enough to cover rent. So the goal is to at least break even on, on the rent cost. So that's yes. going to be the goal for this I think, too, next month. another thing that could do well is kids stuff. When we used to have that little thing of, like, Yeah, the little purses. The all the purses sold. All the kids. You, know, you guys are coming to, for, to get the gumballs. And yeah. then the kids see all the little things for them i think that was really good so i think we can find stuff like that yeah. that'd be great more kid stuff okay have you guys ever heard of freeze-dried olives or dill pickles i am so intrigued you should get but one. i don't get a little bag little bag of pickles five bucks you think People, they're good uh i don't think they're good i know well like, she even has mushrooms mushrooms Ooh. and bananas i'm so intrigued by the pickles like i can't get past it all right we'll get the pickles then we figure we walk around and show you guys some of the other other booths things change fairly often i mean people come in and you know I, there's no like long-term contracts here so people can come in for a month if they if they want maybe there's like a three-month contract i don't know but it's not like anything super long term so people kind of come in and out as they figure out if they like the mall setup or not but a couple people have been here for the long haul like that there's a lady down there that sells like disney pens and stuff she's been here for a really long time I think this is all new. I don't recognize any of this. Yeah. Got a whole wall of peanuts here, or just regular nuts. Jewelry. I've heard jewelry does pretty decently. I don't and know. purses. 
purses, purses yeah. Very well. Our friend Mavi has that purse booth over there and she does really well. I really like this one over here. He's got all sorts of toys and action figures. We've got, you know, like uh, there's some Funko Pops down here, some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and the prices are pretty, pretty good. I mean, these are, are $12 a piece. I imagine that when we get closer to Christmas time, a lot of this like new in-box stuff will probably start to do pretty well. So we may have to put some in our booth when the time comes. I think this is our friend Jimmy's booth. He's got a little double booth here. He sells a little bit of everything, $5 or less on all clothes. I have seen people like go really low on their prices. You know, like I kind of thought with an antique mall, your average selling price would be maybe like 20 to $25. But I think most people are kind of shooting for that like five to $10 price point and just focusing on volume, getting people to buy multiples of low price items instead of one or two higher price items, which seems to be working. Remember this booth up here had all the video games, like yeah, the Nintendo, Legos. the Legos and video and um, he had like the Donkey Kong in 64. Yeah, I mean, I guess, it, yeah, I don't, maybe he, Sold it all. <laughs> I don't know. There's more Legos on this back shelf. More Funko Pops. This person here has a whole little wall of brass stuff. That's kind of that's kind of neat brass stuff. It, pretty much everything brass that we put in our booth has sold. Not for a ton of money usually, but we don't have anything left that hasn't sold. So brass stuff has really been popular. This guy has a huge selection of like action figures and horror stuff. A little play, PlayStation Four right here, hundred fifty dollars. That's not. That's really not bad for for that. Not sure how much he's selling of this stuff because he's he's always stocked. So I don't know if he stocks and then doesn't sell a ton of stuff, but he has been here for eight or nine months at least. Uh, so that tells me that he's at least selling something. Maybe he just keeps it in stock as it sells. I think this guy's been here for a while because I remember the big transformer uh, poster cutout thing. A lot of cool things. There's a lot of people selling similar items. So that, you know, Funko Pops, we've seen four or five booths selling Funko Pops now. So maybe that might be an issue. Like a, a lot of people selling the, the same stuff. It's American Tourist, but it's covered oh, in Oh, Mickey. Else. It's only 40 bucks. Yeah. It's not a bad deal at all. No, especially if you need a suitcase and you're a Disney yeah, fan. Yeah, and it's got a little luggage check. Yeah. I think, isn't this Suzanne's booth? It was at one time because she had the ties back in the back. Yeah, and this is this cover here is because she was making these little golden book journals. She would take the little books and turn them into, into journals. I think this is Suzanne's booth. Yeah. It's nice. We've got some, a bunch of, all that's Disney stuff on that shelf. They said this lady up here at the very front booth, Trendy Treasures, she was doing really well. She's actually got two booths here and an extra booth in the back with like lawn and garden stuff. And this stuff seems, I mean, it's everything. We got books, we got yeah, adult diapers, <laughs> we got toys, cups, furniture. That might be the key. Just like so much a selection of yeah. different items that. There's something for everyone, basically. Yeah. I don't know what that noise is. Of course, when I say that, it finally stops. Oh yeah, did you see this, Haley? This is the Donkey Kong barrel. 250 yeah. bucks. We can get it for the warehouse. Wow. Isn't that awesome? That is really cool. I love it. It's like solid? Yeah. Wow. Can I, can I get it? No. It's time. We gotta try the pickles. I'm so intrigued. I wonder if they're dill. Hopefully they're, yeah, they does say they're they dill, are dill pickles. Okay. I do not like bread and butter pickles. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. Pickle? Wait. It smells like a pickle. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. No. The, no. It's, I mean, I'm gonna eat them. It would be, it's they're weird. not, they're not as crunchy. Like it's a, it's kind of crunchy at the beginning and then it turns into like a slime. Yeah. It tastes good, it tastes like a pickle. But I would not get those the again. The texture's off. Texture. I feel like it would be better instead of freeze drying them, you would just like air dry them, like a like in a dehydrator, because that way they mm -hmm. would definitely be crunchy, like pickle chips. Yeah. I feel like that would be good, but freeze dry. Ugh, no. Yeah. So the time has come in today's video to do what a lot of you guys think is the most exciting part of these booth update videos, and that's where we update the profit tracker chart for the gumball machine itself. So initially we spent $250 on the actual machine as well as the first batch of stuff to go in it that we would actually sell. And I wanted a way to like visually track the progress of us actually selling stuff to know when we'd hit that $250 break even point and then finally become profitable. So I designed this chart on Canva. I put 250 like blank gumballs inside the gumball machine. And every time we get $1 in revenue from the machine for for VINs, we would color in a gumball. So today we're coloring all the gumballs that represents the profit that we just pulled out of the machine 
earlier. And as you can see, we've made a lot of progress. We're almost there. I think I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end here. But this has been a really fun thing. Like, I really like seeing the the progress and coloring and stuff. And we get a lot of comments from you guys that say this is like a, a fun part of the video as well. I'm not sure what we're going to do with the poster once it's done. Somebody said we should like sign it and auction or whatnot or something. But I don't know. I feel like I kind of want to let it stay in the warehouse so we can always remember our humble beginnings. So after this update, it looks like we're still $35 away from our break-even point of 250 bucks. But the middle container of the gumball machine has those runts in it. And I don't have any more of those and they're almost out. So I don't know if we should, you know, use some of our future earnings in the machine to buy more runts to fill that up or just hope that the toys and gumballs can get us that additional $35. So I've been wearing this hat on some whatnot auctions over the last couple weeks and I always get a ton of compliments on whatnot. Everybody's like, it looks great. You should just wear it. But I'm scared to wear it in public. Uh, I'll wear it on a YouTube video in front of thousands of people, but I can't imagine going to Publix wearing this. Like, I don't think it looks bad, but it's just like it would stand out and I'm not, I don't really like attention in, in public like that. I'm actually a fairly introverted person, but I don't know. The, I'm certainly the only one that'll have a Disney Jungle Cruise hat out in the out in the wild. So we'll see. Maybe I'll wear it eventually. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. This has been a synopsis of the booth. Uh, we did sell one thing today. I think after we left, it was the Waffle House coffee mug. I actually bought that at Goodwill for like 99 cents for personal use, but our Keurig machine doesn't make an appropriate amount of coffee that fills that mug appropriately. It's either way too little or way too much. So I never use it. So we put it in the booth for I think $8 and it sold for you know, half price, so $4. Not great, not great, but it's a sale. That means we are on the right track. So thank you so much again for watching today's video. You're the best and we will catch you on the next one.